Hello, I'm Victor Marchese. I'm from Midwestern State University and I'm participating in the REU program here at UT Dallas. My name is Ethan Sands and I also attend Midwestern State University. Here is our presentation. We'll dive right into it. So we are doing broken access control detection focused on privilege escalation and prevention using the Llama 3 LLM based chatbot. And then our sponsors are Dr. Eric Wong and Mr. Zizhao Chen. And then Ethan will take off from here. Yeah, so what is broken access control, otherwise known as BAC? So broken access control occurs when restrictions on what authenticated users are allowed to do and what they are not to do. So essentially, in a nutshell, it's making sure that you can only do what you're permitted to do, making sure that a user, normal user can't do what an admin can do, but an admin user can do what they need to do, such as like creating or deleting users. Uh, broken access control was ranked as a top risk in the Open Worldwide Application Security Project or otherwise known as OWASP top 10 for 2021. So before we kind of get into broken access control, it's best to know what is access control itself. So access control enforces policies that ensure users are only able to access which that they are permitted to. Um, and this is typically done through something called authentication, which is most of the time just something simple like a username and password. Now we get into broken access control. This is where failures within access control occur which can lead to the potential to introduce a variety of security hazards that typically revolve around data breaches and leaks. Our project specifically focuses on a subsection of BAC known as privilege escalation. And this consists of a few different types such as vertical and horizontal. And like I mentioned earlier, this is a subcategory involving the escalation of privileges among users and non-users. So why is BAC detection important? In today's world, data is everything, especially with the introduction of these larger and larger language models. Training these takes an immense amount of data. So this little statistic right here, around 400 million terabytes of data are created daily, which roughly equates to 150 zettabytes of data generated for this year alone. And just for a little bit of perspective right there, a single zettabyte is equivalent to 1 billion terabytes. So that is an unfathomably large amount of data. And much of the world has moved online and businesses have long offered web services to consumers. So, you know, Amazon, a lot of these big companies have gone to online shopping and creating accounts, not only, you know, just for online shopping, but banking on a ton of other businesses as well. So broken access control is very prevalent in web applications and Internet of Things devices. And as I mentioned earlier, this is kind of last bullet point reiterating what I said in the beginning, that data has become valuable. These large language models are growing. I believe Facebook just released their newest one, Llama 3.1, and that one was 405 billion parameters, which is absolutely absurd. Okay, so why is broken access control detection important? This is a little bit of a continuation from the last slide. Um, but robust access control mechanisms are critical to protect this vast amount of data. Obviously, all the data that is harvested, um, collected, or sold needs to be protected um, to protect the user's privacy and keep the integrity of these companies. Um, there are a bunch of examples of recent data breaches, such as Facebook, um, Cambridge, and Equifax breach. Okay, so what are some detection challenges that we see? Uh, with broken access control, um, one, it is very hard to detect during the development phase, and testing for vulnerabilities often happens post-deployment, and this often takes place through ethical hackers and bug hunters. So sometimes companies will send their final product out to um, third parties and have them try and crack it to see where they can find exploits. And then from there, they'll kind of go back and launch updates and kind of ensure that nothing else is really available. So this is definitely something that happens after, you know, everything has been done and they've already been creating this process for months at a time. Um, the need for a proactive approach is where our methodology kind of comes into play. If we can use artificial intelligence to kind of detect it as it's going on rather than waiting towards the end, 
we can save these businesses a lot of time and a lot of money. So that's kind of a preview for what's to come. So this is where we get to the role of AI in broken access control detection. So with artificial, artificial intelligence integration, we can provide a continuous and proactive monitoring for broken access control. And this is where we kind of chose our specific uh, LLM that we're going to use, which is the Llama 3, which is an open source model from Meta, allowing for fine tuning for specific tasks. And training this model, we will um, collect code snippets, um, probably from GitHub and uh, other open source websites, labeled as BAC or not BAC, following kind of a one pot encoding. And fine tuning this uh, LLM will improve the model's accuracy in detecting potential BAC. So essentially, we will have a broken access control detecting professional. So these are some of the research questions that we um, have provided. Um, research question one, what advancements have been made in the detection and correction process of broken access control? So it's kind of just um, kind of an overview of how the detection process and correction has progressed over the coming years. And then on to research question two, are there any detection systems already using artificial intelligence for BAC? And what are the pros and cons of those? And that one's just as it says, um, are there any systems that are already in place that utilize AI for detection processes? And what are the pros and cons of those? And the last research question is using the Llama 3 LLM, can an AI assistant be trained to detect and possibly correct BAC? And what are the results and how do they compare to existing methods, if any? And that one also kind of speaks for itself. And just to add on to the research questions portions, we've answered research question one and then partially of research question two, which I'll cover later, but just a quick note so you guys are informed. So the types of broken access control that we will focus on uh, is privilege escalation. And as I mentioned before, there's two types. So we'll go ahead and get into this first one here, which is horizontal privilege escalation. This occurs when an attacker gains access to resources belonging to another user of the same privilege level. And there's a little uh, excerpt right here. So you can imagine Alice and this attacker both have an account at this bank. And this little URL right there that allows Alice access to her account with her account ID of 123. And if an attacker is able to modify this URL and they are allowed to essentially brute force a bunch of numbers, that allows them to get into everyone's account. Um, all just by changing those last little three digits. And this can be brute force with an algorithm. So this can be done extremely quickly and put a lot of people at risk. And the second one that we have is vertical privilege escalation. This occurs when an attacker gains access to privilege, privilege functionality that they're not permitted to access. So this kind of goes back to a user having admin privileges when they are not listed as an admin. So another a uh, simple example that's shown here on the right, we have an admin and then a simple regular user. And again, we have a URL where there isn't at the last little end, we have an admin equals true. Um, if you're not an admin, this would be set to false. But if an attacker is able to uh, recognize this and then alter that last little bit of the URL and set their admin to true, they would be allowed into the admin panel where they could view users' data, delete users, and add users, which is not something that you would want. A regular user to do, especially if they had malicious intentions in mind. Yeah. So our our uh, Llama three AI model will be trained specifically on those two topics, uh, and be very precise with those once we get doing the research for that. And then we'll be going over the related studies overview. Um, there are a lot of approaches that we found and read about, but a lot of none of them use Llama three because it's a relatively new language model. So we really wanted to see what the efficacy of it is. Um, so we have the diverse approaches, manual penetration testing, machine learning models, real-time monitoring, and then highlighted studies that I will cover today is quantitative assessment, automated detection, and then least privilege enforcement. So to start off, uh, I'm going to talk about quantitative assessment. So there was a study by Hassan et al. And they conducted a quantitative assessment of BAC vulnerabilities in web applications. They employed manual penetration testing on around 330 web applications. The study revealed, uh, you can see that in the graph here that I posted, 39.09% of the tested applications were vulnerable to BAC. And key factors contributing 
to to these vulnerabilities included session session mis misconfiguration and improper input validation. The authors also used a statistical method such as binary logistics regression and Pearson's X2 value to analyze correlations among various factors. So they were very math heavy on their application and it came out with good results. And then and then it was able to mitigate most of these things effectively. Okay, the second one was automatic detection of API access control vulnerabilities in decentralized Web3 applications by Paton and Parisi, 2023. Um, they focused mainly on web applications that use Web3, and they introduced the access behavior model, ABL, a real-time automated security monitoring approach designed to detect and prevent API access control vulnerabilities during runtime. So this is more like a proactive approach is similar to what we're doing so we'll probably be following in similar methodologies to them because they did use a little bit of AI in their um, research and then it emphasized the necessity of continuous monitoring to proactively identify vulnerabilities that might not be apparent during development and the testing phase because as Ethan mentioned before a lot of this is done afterwards it's not during during the software development lifecycle so it's a lot of these issues are because of day one or zero day vulnerabilities that are existing, ex that exist even before you're done with the program. And then the next one is by Steiner et al. So hardening web applications using least privileged DM DBMS access model. So by Steiner, they tackled the issue of excessive privileges in web applications by introducing higher hierarchical policy. So this kind of helps prevent BAC before it's even kind of an issue. Um, they're trying to include it into the software development lifecycle. It's, I know the SDLC is like a huge thing already, but this needs to be brought into it because BAC is now number one on OWASP vulnerability list, which is not good because it jumped from like number eight to number one um, over the course of a couple of years. So they study for, their study focused on converting legacy web applications to comply with pulp through a formal step-by-step -step process. This approach was applied to the OWASP Mutilide web application, resulting in a more secure model by reducing permissions to a minimum necessary for each task. The Im implementation of HPOL demonstrated how legacy systems could be retrofitted to enhance security. So they were adding these to existing systems that were our, that did not have the BAC protection in place. And then because of this, they were able to avoid a lot of vulnerabilities associated with BAC. So BAC detection in IoT systems. So this is Internet of Everything systems. So the paper covered <clears throat> man in the middle proxy. So someone would intercept the incoming signals to the system and then kind of just like ride that wave to see what was going on. So they didn't really hack the user, they, they hacked the, the transportation system. So like the internet, like the pathway to whatever it was working on. So they proposed a detection framework utilizing man in the middle technique and fuzz testing to uncover vulnerabilities in the communication between IoT devices and cloud services. So the, the communication pathways were the target here. The study introduced semi-automated system called Back Detector, which successfully identified multiple back vulnerabilities across various IoT devices. This research highlights the unique challenges posed by the IoT environment, such as encrypted communication and the need for dynamic and static reverse analysis techniques. Okay, so as of now, we've got the basics for our research but we need to implement the Llama 3 and LLM bots so we'd really like to continue doing this um, and working on it just to get something done and accomplished maybe even publish a paper that would be really awesome but the future research direction uh, we want to do more of a comparison because there isn't a lot of AI that's implemented in BAC because it is relatively new um, to implement something into broker's access control because it's very complicated. 
So enhancements in AI models for vulnerability detection. So we might not even end up going with Llama, but um, it is an option still. And then we want to ex maybe even offer an expansion to detect other types of security threats, depending on how we train the model. So kind of piggybacking on what uh, Victor had mentioned here with future research, uh, future implementation, detailed steps on how to on how the Llama 3 large language model is trained for broken access control detection. Um, looking at some other examples that aren't necessarily trained for broken access control, but just in general, um, curating a really good data set is crucial for training some of these large language models, um, if not all of them. So uh, providing that we can generate or uh, collect a large amount of data is imperative to have really good results. Um, data specific in the fine tuning process, running some algorithms, I believe uh, the best one that I know of right now is the random forest long term, long short term memory. So that one will be something that we will definitely look into in the future. Um, as for the future results comparison performance metrics of the Llama 3 LLM based assistant, um, like Victor mentioned earlier, uh, Llama 3 is just uh, one of the options that we have, we don't have to use it but it is one of the few that is open source and very reliable in its field. And comparison with other detection methods in terms of accuracy and efficiency. So maybe we use a few models and then compare them against each other to see which one gives us the best results or different algorithms that provide different results for us. Yeah, so we, we, have, we have quite a few routes to take. Um and a lot of options and opportunities through this research. And then here on the right, I have the meta thing, um, meta logo for the Llama 3 because Llama 3 is for meta. And then here is the OWASP criticality list. So broken access control is number one on that list. And it, before it was like six or seven in 2019. Yeah, I believe in like 2017, it was five or six and then it jumped up the first in 2021. Yeah, so it's a pretty important topic and it's becoming a bigger and bigger issue as time goes on. So here are our references. Um, we have eight references currently, uh, probably way more on the way. Okay. Did I s okay. And that is it. Thank you for watching our presentation.